would you choose a safe diagnostic tool or would you choose a riskier one that has more capability? In front of us we have the D7W, what many would consider to be, you will need to watch the video until the end to find out. The D7W is the highest spec D7 from its family. More about the other products can be found somewhere on the screen. We are looking at 7 inch screen. 4 core 1.5 gigahertz CPU, 2 gigabytes of RAM, 64 gigabytes of ROM, CAN FD, DOIP, a camera, all the fancy technology that X Tool is able to bring, and especially they are marketing this tool with it having the new Wi Fi system. The Wi Fi technology is what allows this unit to be tested by a lot of reviewers that are showing off 10, 20, 30, 40, 50 meters away from the unit running diagnostics. But the question is, why would you want to do that craziness? That capability is to a certain extent useless, except if you want to, or if you're expecting the car to explode and you want to do a diagnostic scan while, while that is happening. The important takeaway is not the distance, the importance of this technology is the fact that it allows for better transfer rates and it's allowing you for a better and more stable connectivity with the vehicle. This will be useful for those risky moments when this tool is allowing you to reflash things like the BMW CAS4 systems to program a new key and other functions that are a little bit iffy to be done wirelessly. But with the Wi-Fi capability, that might be something that is mitigated with that. What is this unit actually good for? This unit will allow you to do basic diagnostics, data logging, actuator testing, so the bi-directional control. It will allow you to do remote diagnostics with the capability of someone else logging in, logging in to your unit. It will allow you to do all sorts of fancy stuff especially with their special functions menu. More, more detail about that will be covered on a separate video in which I'm going to go through all of the menus somewhere on the screen and in the description is where you're going to find that video. But the list is quite extensive. Expect the normal things. So service interval resets, electronic parking brake, activation, deactivation, DPF regions, a lot of the normal day-to-day -day functions and it is usually allowing you to carry on those functions. Now the way that you actually are able to engage those functions will be a little bit questionable because sometimes those functions will not work from the special menu and you will need to access the ECU that you want to work on and only after that perform the things that you are expecting it to perform. The tricky bit or the disconnect that I found with this unit is with the fact that Xtool is pushing out a lot of functions, functions that are not that easy to, to perfect and functions that other manufacturers are staying away like from the plague. This unit will allow you to, to do mileage correction, EEPROM rewriting with appropriate accessories, but sometimes even without. It will allow you to do key programming, advanced key programming, things like the one that I've already mentioned, doing or adding keys to a CAS4 system, which is a little bit dangerous to do, but they are implementing in their software and allowing the tools, starting with the D7 family, to do things like that. Here is where we bring to the question the idea of do we get too much diagnostic power? Because the guys at Xtool are fighting for your attention, fighting for you to really want their tools. They are kind of giving you all their software capabilities. And these guys are kind of the wild card of the diagnostic world. They will give you a lot of functions so that you will decide to go with them. And once you get accustomed to their uh, ecosystem with their platforms, hopefully they will have you as a customer for all the other things that you will want to use diagnostics for. 
we come back to the main question. Do you want a diagnostic tool that is safe? Look at some of the older companies that are giving you just the basics. Or do you want to push the limits and are willing to take a bit of a chance with things like the X-Tool? For me, the X-Tool is the riskier, more powerful diagnostic tool and it excels in things like data logging and the, the ease of use, the lack of branding, so they don't force you to generate reports with their name. They allow you access to the unit itself so you can connect on the USB. You can have access on what is happening on the unit and also you are able to personalize and make this hardware work a little bit better for you. If that works for you, this might be the perfect tool. Now, pricing and where to buy them. These tools are now available in or on all the um, online shopping platforms. You will have them on Amazon if you want it delivered really fast and with the Amazon protection. You will have them on eBay, which is kind of the middle ground and you will have them on AliExpress where you will expect the lowest price and the place where you take a little bit more risk. Links are in the description. If you decide to support the channel, you might want to buy with one of our links and I promise that I'm going to do even more videos in the future showing you how to use these tools. These units will come with three years of free updates. After that, the online functionality will kind of stop if we look at the other companies. And after that, your tool will not receive the latest uh, software upgrades, but it will still work as a diagnostic tool. Pricing for those updates after the three year period of time, I've done some research and it looks like you're going to pay around $100 per year, which is the equivalent of 80 pounds in Britain. The best way of getting those updates, I still believe it's AliExpress because they don't actually ship out the product. You just get the, the update code. Keep that in mind if you want to do the updates later on. A quick reminder, because I always forget, in the links you have access to our diagnostic tool database, a place where you can compare tools side by side in a much easier to see format. Take a look at it and see if you enjoy using that tool. Back to the video. The good versus the bad about this tool. Data logging is amazing. The ease of use is something to actually consider and the fact that they do not force you to promote their diagnostic tools in the reporting. Your reports that you generate with this tool are very clean and very usable for your customers. Mileage correction, an interesting source of additional revenue or an interesting opportunity for you to code clusters and the fact that you're able to use accessories like the endoscope make this a very appealing unit to have and a very versatile tool. It makes me to use it more than the genuine BMW stuff. On the bad side of things or on the dark side of the things, this tool has labels that are really hard to understand. They have functions that are really hard to find because the naming and their structure is quite awkward. Some of the descriptions for the functions, they're a little bit iffy. And if you continue to use the tool, you will find moments where you're trying to engage a function and that function fails or doesn't work, or even the unit crashes and the vehicle is in a limbo mode. As the example, this unit is not able to do the fuel bleeding procedure on the BMWs. You can have a go around and use a different output uh, function, but it's, um, it's not something that you would want to see. I've used the idle increase function and it crashed, kept the car with the idle increased until I stopped the car. The unit wasn't able to stop it by itself. So those things are kind of big selling points if you are a garage and if you want to do a lot of work in a confined space of time. Battery, uh, the draining of the battery is quite extensive and I've noticed that this unit, by comparison with the older D7 or with the simple D7s, this unit is eating up the CPU. The CPU is maxing out quite often. And the fact that you are able just to charge it with the 12 volt pin is something that makes it hard to use, especially when you're running down or you don't have enough battery and you might 
not have that 12 volt charger. Other things to consider. This dongle is really, really hard to carry. It's quite awkward. I'm planning of upgrading it and I'll give it, I'm gonna give you a hint as a tip how you can sort out this little thing. We looked at the good, we looked at some of the bad. Now let's think about ways that we can improve this diagnostic tool. My top tips for using this, this type of diagnostic tool are as follows. At number one, use the hook in the proper position. This needs to go on the airbag, not on the top of our steering, steering wheel. After that, you can improve your handling of this unit by placing a long magnet on the side. I'm gonna show you when I'm actually doing it pictures with how that happens. Long magnet on the side, metal plate here. You're able to carry and make sure that you don't lose the dongle. Because the battery drains like there's no tomorrow and because I have moments when I don't know where I place the charger, I'm planning of buying a 12 volt cigarette uh, connector to the vehicle with the appropriate pin so that I have it as a backup because when I'm working in the car and the battery drains with something like that, I'm able to charge it on the fly and it's quite useful. Number three, always pair your uh, diagnostic tool with a hotspot on your phone. It will be a life changer. It will be something that will save you a lot of hassle and a lot of time to do it exactly when you need to use that function, especially for the more advanced coding and other procedures that you might want to consider or you might want to do. And one of the other tips that will not cost you any money is to keep the screen protector that the unit comes with and just make sure in the beginning that you cut the excess of that screen protector so that you are not tempted of ripping it off from the screen. And now we have our big dilemma. Should we buy a tool like this or shouldn't we? It all depends on your use scenario. If you are working on your private vehicle or if you have access to an additional OEM standard diagnostic tool, this is a great addition to your tool set and me personally, I'm using it more than my genuine BMW stuff. But I still have the BMW genuine stuff for those moments when this diagnostic tool is not really helping me with functions like um, the fuel bleeding or other more complicated stuff. If you are working in an environment like a garage environment or somewhere where time is crucial and you, you cannot troubleshoot or search for go arounds, this might not really be the right tool for you. Many of the issues that this tool is bringing can have go arounds, but it takes time and energy. And some people just don't have that time and they just don't have that energy. Now, if you enjoyed the video, you might also want to see that one or that one in which we are looking at other diagnostic tools or looking at this diagnostic tool in more detail. Until the next video, thank you for watching and see you in the next one.